Okay, um, you know, we're, we're fairly healthy injury-wise. You know, we'll hold out Sonny Michel today with his shoulder, but don't uh, expect that to affect his game status. And then T. Lou and, uh, and Witt will just have rest days. Working through that, yeah. Uh, two two, two two is uh, most likely to do that. Yeah. Maybe I'll get back there. Yeah, he's uh, he's he has been better than I thought, and I thought he was going to be really good. And I've been really impressed with his body of work and his resume over the course of his career. Uh, I think he's doing a great job. You know, I think the best players elevate those around them. I think guys are playing better around him. I think he's seeing the field really well. I think he has great ownership and autonomy of what we're really trying to get done. Uh, and I think he's able to really apply all that experience. You know, he's had a lot of great experiences, a lot of great coaches, a lot of great teammates that he's played with in Detroit. So he's able to take that, apply it in the right ways, and then he's playing with 10 really good players around him on a regular basis. And so I think he's doing an excellent job. I think Kevin O'Connell and Zach Robinson have done an outstanding job of providing clarity for him week in and week out in terms of what we're looking for. But, um, you know, can't say enough about the leadership that he's displayed, and I think the best make everybody around you better, and that's exactly what he's done. Sure. Yeah, I mean, no, I mean, he, he's a he's a quality class act, and you know, he's always going to be honest. But he's going to, you know, he's a he's a great kid. He's a he's a he's a great guy. I really enjoyed the time with him, and you know, I, I think you know we've kind of talked about that, and nothing really to add to that. You know, I, I would say this, you know, there's a, I think there's a trust that I have and really our staff as a whole. I think you want to make sure that you know what's going on and you have your suggestions here and there, but no different than any other week. Um, there's some familiarity. I've been watching these guys, but um, these guys do a great job of putting together plans. I think it's a very fine line, especially as a, a head coach, of making sure that you're involved and giving your input, but not disrupting, you know, their work, their weekly rhythm and their flow. And so I try to keep consistent with that. Um, but there's a lot of weeks where you might have some familiarity with an opponent for different reasons, whether it be coaching or player wise. And so um, it's pretty standard. No question. I mean, he was a great leader, Lindsey, for such a long period of time. He's got such a big personality, and he had such a positive presence on this team, and then he was a really productive player. So you're missing him in a lot of instances. What I really think is some guys have really stepped up and elevated their play in his absence. You look at a Sebastian Joseph Day. You look at a Greg Gaines, a Sean Robinson. I think those guys have done a really nice job of filling that void, but uh, you miss his presence. You miss his personality, his production. Um, you know, Michael was a, a great player for us, really loved working with him. And, you know, we wanted to be able to continue to work, uh, you know, have him back here. And for whatever reason, it didn't work out. But he's doing a good job. He's playing good ball for them. You know, I think it's hard to say, Lindsay. I think we want to see steady improvement. I think there's certainly areas of, of focus and concentration where there's a lot of good things going on that you want to continue to do that at a high level. And then there's some other things that, that we can do better, and that's coaches and players alike. But um, as far as the ceiling, I think we're looking for steady improvement. And, um, and I, I think if we do that, then that will end up being a, some really good things can result from that. Sure. 
I think it's really predicated on which phases of our offense do we want to try to utilize to attack the opposing defense. And, you know, I mean, we could sit here and, and really talk about the depths of that, you know, for a really long period of time. But play action's a part of our offense, as is the keeper game. The drop back game you're seeing a little bit more of, but there's different phases of the drop back game. Are you talking empty? Are we in six man protection? Are we doing so? There's a lot of different phases of our offense, but I think what you're talking about is you want to be as multiple as you can, presenting a variety of looks that the defense has to prepare for, but you also want to be smart when you're utilizing some of those things that might put a little bit more stress on the offensive line and some of those known passing situations. So it's a give and take, but. Um, you know, we've done a lot more out of the shotgun like we've talked about, and so I think you want to make sure that you've got a balance of those types of things, whether it be play action, whether it be drop back, running game. And so um, each year, I mean, if you really look at it, whether it's 17, 18, 19, 20, there's always been a little bit different narrative, even though there's still a similar philosophy, but it always starts with the quarterback, you know, and, and some of those things are a reflection of what we feel like, you know, takes advantage of what Matthew does best for the 2021 Rams, and, and that's what you're seeing through six games, but you know, we might come out of this game and utilize a lot more things that maybe we haven't done. And so each week is kind of how the game plan comes together and then what our players ultimately feel most comfortable with and then what the defense is presenting. And I guess what I wonder is, like, when, you, when you're spanning that philosophy, understanding what his skill set is, what are those conversations like internally and, and with him in terms of, um, you know, shifting what you guys had historically done but figuring out what he's supposed to do? Yeah, I mean, I think to me, it, it all goes back to the intent, you know, the intent of the, you know, what's the intent of the play, and there might be, you know, similar ways that you're distributing the field and the drop back concept that you would do in the play action, and it's really, are we trying to manipulate a second level defender, who are we really trying to put in conflict um, with the play action, and sometimes if you feel like you can get that same thing done off of the drop back, where you're not necessarily going to have too much of an influence on that player, but being able to get five out or four out immediately, ends up distributing and dispersing the coverage in a manner that's reflective of how you want to attack it, that can give you the intent that we're looking for too. So it always doesn't have to be either or. And I think that's the benefit of it is that now you're really saying, okay, hey, it's runs, it's play actions, it's screens, it's keepers. You might have to defend a variety of different dropbacks as well so that you're a little bit more multiple in what you can present to the defense. And, and that's what we've tried to be intentional about. And, and a lot of that is a result of our players. Uh, with Matthew, you're saying? I, I don't think so, Kurt. I, you know, I, I think he's so mature. He's got such a great way about himself. I think you have dialogue throughout the course of the week, but you know, here's what you know about Matthew. He's so real. He's so genuine. He's so authentic. You know, he's got a lot of great experiences, a lot of great relationships that he's had there. But, um, you know, I don't want to speak for him, but I would imagine, hey, he's going to lock in. He's got the same sort of focus and concentration that I've seen from the previous six weeks. And then I think, uh, you know, he's going to expect to put himself in a position to go out and play well. And, and that's what we expect him to do. Yeah, I think it uh, it depends on what type of defensive structure that I'm anticipating, where we're at on the field, um, what's the flow of the game, what's the score. You know, so there's a lot of factors. Um, but I think ultimately what it, what it would really boil down to, Steve, is is what's the best way that we feel like we can convert. Some instances you might get some better angles that you're looking for in the gun, um, depending upon the type of scheme. But then you know you do have some more varieties and variations that you can present to a defense from that home position. So. Um, you know, we've done both in some of those exact situations that you're asking about and had success. And so a lot of that has resulted, if you say, hey, why one or the other? It's based on the defensive structure that we're anticipating. What were the pluses and minuses you saw from the mix you used in Yeah, it will be a week to week thing. And a lot of that, I thought it was a great game plan by the defensive coaches. And I thought it was a great job by trying to utilize the entirety of our roster that we have up on game day. And you're really activating a lot of different guys' skill sets, trying to take advantage of what they can do at a really high level. Liked what Burgess did in the minimal clip, uh, you know, in the short amount of snaps he played. I thought Double D was outstanding. Uh, the versatility that he displayed. Obviously, we know Taylor Rapp did an excellent job. Nick Scott, you saw a little bit more of. And so I think being able to take advantage of getting more guys on the grass in situations and circumstances that benefit them. And then that also ends up being more that you're presenting 
into an offense, which kind of creates that conflict. And so, um, you know, it is a weekly thing, but I thought last week was a great uh, demonstration of the coaches and then the players delivering on the game plan. That was, uh, you know, a really nice job by them. He's been great. You know, it's been a real positive. You know, if you look at all the things that he's overcome, Kevin, to see the significant amount of snaps that he's really played over the last three weeks, more than he's ever played by far, seeing how he's coming out of these games, that's been a real positive. I mean, you talk about a guy that's overcome a lot of adversity and a lot of setbacks from a health standpoint to be where he's at. It's a it's a great feel-good story. Want to continue to keep him healthy, which is why you see us be smart with him throughout the course of the weeks, giving him a rest day like today. But he's only getting better, and uh, if he wasn't so long maybe we wouldn't have that uh offsides last week but uh he's he's doing a good job uh i think well i think you know too Lindsay, from covering him at, from his time at usc he's an incredibly gracious you know compassionate kind human being and then when he gets on the field it's like another uh, another robert woods comes to play because of the toughness the competitiveness He's a great football player. He's a great person. But, you know, you talk about a switch that goes off in between the, you know, in between those white lines. It's it's pretty impressive to watch him turn it on and off. But, you know, I think what says as much about him as anything is, you know, you look at the receiver position, being voted a captain, watching the influence and the effect that he can have in a positive way on his teammates, watching the way that he's just steadily gotten better and better, become what I think is one of the more complete players in this league, but just his leadership um, you know, the way that he treats people, the way that he brings people with him, what kind of husband, what kind of father he is, all those things go into, you know, you can't say anything but great things about what a, a special human being and a, and a great football player Robert Woods is. What is it with Coach to have a guy who's so willing to kind of do all the, the dirty work? It's amazing. You know, I, I told, um, you know, I, I've talked to Eric Yarber about this before. When you look at how special Robert is, you know, the things that Cooper does, um, you know, when we had Brandon Cooks, you know, those those are the guys that are, they're so special. And I think Van's becoming one of those guys because of the influence and effect that Robert has on him and that Cooper has on him. And, and those guys, um, they're, they're they're pretty selfless. They're they're special football players that want to know the ins and outs. And they understand the importance of those contributions and how it contributes to us being a better football team and ultimately a better offense. And um, and I also think it's a great credit to Eric Yarber as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's everything. You know, I, I think those guys have been outstanding. I think they've been so steady, so consistent. I think they're really playing as one. I think they're tough. I think they're com- competing really well in both phases. Um, and I think as a result of that, you can see they're confident, you know, they, they, you know, that that's a powerful thing. Once you start putting good stuff on tape and you're having some success against some really good fronts, confidence can be something that can compound in a real positive way. And I think that's what you're seeing from our guys, all five across the board, Kevin Carberry, Zach Cromer, Nick Jones doing a great job with those guys, but it's big. It's, it's a huge part of, of what does give you confidence and what makes me uh, not be such a jerk and come around a little bit quicker. I apologize for that behavior the other day. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think it's a combination of both, Steve. I think very similar to what I was talking about with Matthew earlier. You know, you look at Aaron Donald and what makes him, you know, what I think, you know, epitomizes his greatness is he raises the level of play of everyone around him. That's a special thing to see. Um, I think Leonard Floyd is asserting himself as one of those players too. You know, Leonard Floyd, you look at the way that he's played, the way that he's responded after a career year last year, the relentless pursuit, the way that he plays, the ownership and understanding. Those two guys together up front are really wreaking havoc and doing an excellent job. But I think those other guys, when you have that kind of example day in and day out of what does it look like to be a pro's pro, to not necessarily just see what you do on Sundays, but how does your weekly rhythm, your process, in the meeting room, on the practice field, 
you know, how does that end up translating to that game reality? And I think that's where those guys um, really make an influence. I think Eric Henderson is a special coach. He does such a great job of really developing, pouring into these guys. You talk about a Sebastian Joseph Day and you watch the ascension of what he's done from his rookie year. Then he gets with Henny and what he's done over the last few years to develop himself into a, really a complete football player that can play on all three downs. It's been fun to watch and just seeing T. Lou healthy. Thad Bogardis is really making an imprint on him and you know, I can't say enough about just the collaboration of the guys, whether it's, you know, the players delivering, but then being able to work in unison with those coaches and, and seeing it come to life on the field. That's what you love about coaching, Steve. Okay? Thank you, guys.